Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my kingdom of stagey isolation. If you're seeing my face for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe, and I'm obsessed with all things theatre. And I've been here in my flat making videos for just over a year and a half. I'd been on YouTube a little longer than that, but basically when COVID-19 shut down all of UK theatre, I started making a lot more videos in here, listening to cast recordings, talking about things that were going on, whatever was going on. And one of the first videos that I made in my flat was a reaction to the cast recording of the Prince of Egypt. This was one of my first videos to get really popular on YouTube and even though I was listening to this I had never actually seen the show live. Listening to it made me really excited to go and see the show but unfortunately the world had ended so that was not possible. So I booked to see the reopening performance of the Prince of Egypt at the Dominion Theatre in London at the beginning of July this year. Unfortunately I then had to self-isolate because of the Covid-19 app that I've already talked about. They very kindly transferred my tickets to a different performance but then they had to shut down because of the same self-isolation guidelines. They were set to reopen, I was ready to go see it again, and they had to shut down again. Of all the shows in London, I do think the Prince of Egypt has had the worst luck with the number of times it has had to close while cast members isolate. It's not surprising to me though, considering the size and scale of this show and this cast, that they are more likely to have positive cases or contact with positive cases and have to shut down for that reason. There's a lot of them. So when the show finally reopened last week, I decided that I wasn't taking any chances and I was going to see it straight away. I got a rush ticket via Todaytix for their reopening matinee. I got a lovely seat in the dress circle for £25. Big up Todaytix. And I hopped on a train into London to go and see the show. So today I'm going to be giving you finally my review of The Prince of Egypt. Now, even though this has been open for ages and there's really not a lot of sense in reviewing it this late into the run, I wanted to come on here and talk about this because this is a show that really divided people. When it had its press night originally last year, there were a lot of people who were very critical of this show and then there were seemingly just as many people who really enjoyed it. I had friends who loved it. I had friends who thought they were going to love it but didn't. So I was really intrigued. Everyone usually agrees on stuff. Something is most often like a four star and everyone will say, yes, this is quite good theater. Or everyone will say, objectively, this has some issues and everyone will agree on that. But something that divides critics so polarizingly is fascinating to me. Something that some people can really love while some people can struggle with so much. That is theatre I have to go and see so that I can make my mind up for myself. So let's talk about The Prince of Egypt at the Dominion Theatre. Drum roll, please. I would say this production was three stars. No, four stars. I, can I say three and a half? It's really on that line. And if I had to separate it, act one is getting four stars from me, act two is getting three. So I am gonna have to say three and a half stars because I'm not gonna reach a decision while I'm sat here in this chair. If we're talking big picture, there was lots to love in this production. Just the score, the epicness, the orchestrations, the size of the cast, the scale of everything was immense. I was obsessed before the show started, just the way that they had designed the auditorium, the scale of the proscenium with all of the sheets coming out, and the staging I thought was stunning yet simple. The Dominion stage is huge, there's so much you can do with it, and they did so much with it. The costume design I thought was incredible. The staging, oh my god, the staging. The choreography, next level. The way that they included ensemble dancers, like becoming the river, and the way that they showed all of the plagues and the sagnet, just everything they did. All of the use of dance, the use of movement, really, really incredible stuff. I think that this show's biggest problems are things that the musical adaptation was never necessarily going to be able to fix because they're sort of in the source material. Now, this story is a biblical epic, which is always going to make it big, both in terms of emotional scale and also in terms of sheer length. A show like Les Mis can sustain its very long runtime by having banger after banger after banger and a lot of plot points that actually affect a lot of things and a million different characters and we move through time. Prince of Egypt struggles because it's a very long show that sort of just really only follows a small family dynamic. For the scale of this story, we really only get shown these few characters and not a lot happens to them. Not in the same way as Les Mis where things are constantly evolving I just think it's sort of more tensions building up and simmering over and something might happen and then there's a discussion about it and then oh no they're changing their mind but then oh no I've changed your mind again oh but you've changed your mind again it's sort of frustratingly slow paced while being very long but there's not a lot they could do about that because you can't change the bible story 
that you're adapting that much. You know, when they say some things are sacred, some things literally are sacred. Practically what happens is act one is just very, very long, but there's nowhere else I would put the interval other than where it is. And then in act two, I feel badly for saying this, but I did not like any of the songs in Act 2. Every time a song happened in Act 2, I thought, why is this character singing at this moment? Spoilers about to happen, FYI. So Ramesses loses his son. There is a beautiful piece of staging where he and his wife grieve the loss of their child, and then Moses sings a song about it. It's a weird moment, and it's not even like a good Angelica singing It's Quiet Uptown moment. It's just a Moses is making it about him moment. It's a very odd choice to me. And Act 2 was riddled with those kind of strangenesses. Strangenesses? I'm standing by it. The entire cast of this show I thought were very, very strong, and I saw the full cast at the performance I was at. Christina Lardo really won me over as Zipora. I just loved how passive aggressive she was, and the vocals that she brought, and the dancing that she brought. A really, really easy performer to watch. Just a fantastic performance. And then I loved when Alexia Kadim came in as Miriam. I wanted more of her because she was so emotive, so passionate, and the two of them coming together, I will talk about that in a minute, but gold. Clive Rowe also gets to steal the show a little bit as, gosh, what was his name? He was the guy with the sheep. Look at your life, look at your life through heavens. I'm not going to remember his name by singing this song. I don't know what I'm doing here. Joe, J J Jethro, Jethro. <laughs> Clive Rowe also got a chance to steal the show as Jethro. He delivers this great number after coming in quite late and then he gets to leave again for ages. He has a great time. Liam Tamney and Luke Brady were both great as the two central brothers. They played off each other so well. Both of their vocals were amazing. They really have to carry and ground the show with their relationship and their dynamic. And Debbie Currup was another standout for me as their mother, as the Queen of Egypt. I thought that she was brilliant. Just a lovely, grand, but yet very sensitive and heartwarming performance from her. She brought many layers to her character, which I appreciate because there wasn't, I feel like, that much in the script for her to work with, but she managed to really find something interesting. There are a few really great moments in this show. I'm going to talk about the less obvious ones. The end of Act One is just brilliant, and as much as I like to pretend I'm a very discerning theatre critic who looks for like nuance and integrity, I am a little bit of a caveman, and whenever there's anything with fire, I just get very excited. So I'm here studying the stage like, ooh, that staging is great, ooh, I'm enjoying this, and then fire happens, so I'm like, yay, fire! There's a lot of pyrotechnics in this show, I really enjoyed that. Anytime that Deliver Us motif comes back, I am sold, I am won over, it is such a strong melody, it works so well. The very end of the show, also brilliant. There's a particular piece of staging that they do to convey something of biblically epic proportions that happens. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it is very, very well done. It's very exciting to watch as an audience. But as much as I don't want to be basic, the greatest moment in the show is when they sing When You Believe. I get goosebumps from the start, just the simplicity of the initial staging of it, just the way that it begins. It really reflects the movie in that way. And they're very smart for just knowing that this was such a perfect Academy Award winning song. They did not have to do that much with it, adapt it that much, theatricalize it. It was already very ready just to be put on a stage. Alexia and Christine together, it works so well. The ensemble coming in, just the triumph of it with the orchestra, perfect, absolutely perfect. It's very telling that the audience applauded for a very long time. Either that or they thought it was the end of the show. Spoiler alert, it is not. The theatre going experience was really good. I, I hesitate on that just because you get prescribed arrival times with your tickets and people did not really heed that because when I arrived at the theatre there was a giant, giant, giant queue extending about a mile from the theatre. It went round the Dominion, down another street, down another street, past the Dominion stage door. It was a very, very long queue. Once inside, it was very easy to socially distance. It's a very big auditorium. It's a very big theatre. There was plenty of space. That was all very fine, very reassuring. While I was in the very long queue, actually the person behind me introduced themselves to me, said that they have watched my channels and watched my videos. If you're watching this one now, it was very lovely to meet you. I had a lovely time getting to know you. That was a delight. I got this lovely t-shirt. I don't know how much of it you can see here. Downside of this t-shirt. Every time I see it, I will start singing the song. But a very positive theatre going experience all in all. So many people would enjoy this show. You know, anyone who is expecting to see big scale in their West End productions. I know a lot of people who travel, who come from a long way, come to West End expecting big musicals, big orchestra, big sound, big cast, big sets. 
they expect to see their value for money. If you are one of those people, you see it in this show. Sort of more so than any other show currently playing in the West End, I think. Maybe Mary Poppins will give this a run for theatrical magic, but the effects on this, the cast on this, the staging, everything is just done huge. Everything is done 100%, 110%, 125%. It's a really visually impressive production, it also sounds incredible, so there's lots to enjoy from there. It's the perfect show for families, it's the perfect show if you were a fan of the film, you are absolutely going to enjoy this. It's different enough from the film that it doesn't really invite comparison, it's more just interesting to see how it's been adapted. If you like Wicked, you are going to love the Stephen Schwartz score, you are going to love this magical show. Any kind of a Disney 90s child, I feel like this is going to be your vibe. That is my suggestion. So, go and buy tickets to go see The Prince of Egypt at the Dominion Theatre, if that sounds like something you would like to go and see. This has been my review. Like I said, I really enjoyed my time there. I can make some criticisms about the structure of the show, but generally speaking, I had a really nice afternoon. I would absolutely go back and see this show again, and I probably will. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my stage YouTube channel for plenty more content coming very soon. Hopefully I will be at other West End shows that are about to reopen and I might be bringing you some reviews of them as well. Mysterious. If there are any other West End shows coming up that you would like me to go and review, drop them down in the comments section or better still, go on Twitter and tell those shows that you would like Mickey Joe Theatre to be invited to review because that is the best way to make that happen. Also, if you would like to support me as a stagey content creator, head over to patreon.com forward slash Mickey Joe Theatre where you can join the other fans who have already subscribed to get a bunch of extra video and photo content. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe!